Good afternoon. I'm Police Chief Katrina Thompson, and on behalf of the women and men of the Winston-Salem Police Department, I want to welcome you to the press conference addressing our 2020 vision for our violence prevention plan. Before I begin, I want to take this opportunity to recognize our mayor, Mayor Allen Joins, Public Safety Chair James Taylor Jr., and our council members, Jeff McIntosh, John Larson, and Annette Scipio. I want to also like, I would also like to recognize our city manager, Mr. Lee Garrity, and assistant city manager, Ms. Tasha Logan Ford. At this time, I'd like to ask Mayor Joins and Public Safety Chair James Taylor Jr. to join us at the podium for opening remarks. <coughs> Thank you, Chief, and good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to be here and to say on behalf of the uh, citizens of Winston-Salem, our 250,000 citizens, and I'm sure for the Forsyth County residents as well, to say thank you to this, uh, for this press conference, bringing together our police, our sheriff, our district attorney, our uh, U.S. attorney, and others to talk about that we are working in a collaborative way to address the issue of violence in our community. You'll hear about a number of initiatives that are underway and some new ones that will be begun to say that we, we are concerned about this and we will do something about it. So thank you for being here and Chief, thank you for and all the other participants for being a part of this. Good afternoon. I echo the comments of Mayor Joins. I just want to take a moment and thank all of the government agencies that came together to ensure that the people of this community are safe. I greet you on behalf of the Public Safety Committee. So thank you to the brave men and women of our police department, sheriff's department, and the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, for the work that they're doing to come together to ensure just that. And our message is simple. Uh, to those who are committing violent crimes in our community, we want to say to you that it will not be tolerated and we will do everything that we can to stop you. And to those uh, law-abiding and responsible members of our community, we want to say to you that we're going to work to do everything we can to keep you safe. So thank you all for coming together for this partnership, and we appreciate what you do to help our city to be a better place to live, work, and relax. Thank you, Mayor Joins and Chairman Taylor. I am joined here today by our Forsyth County Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough, Forsyth County District Attorney Jim O'Neill, and from the Middle District of North Carolina, the U.S. Attorney Matt Martin, Drug Enforcement Administration re Resident Agent in Charge, Dirt Blue, and from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive, Special Agent Mike Newsom. The purpose of this press conference is to share our 2020 vision and our plan to address violent crime, particularly gun violence, by our most wanted offenders in Winston-Salem. In 2020, the Winston-Salem Police Department will continue to address the issues of gun violence within the limits of our laws to ensure a safer community for our citizens. We will continue to forge relationships that identify and support efforts to successfully disrupt and curtail gun violence. However, we will not be successful addressing these issues without the su support of our community and the criminal justice system. One of our initiatives include enhancing violent firearms investigative team, the VFIT team. This will be accomplished by reaching out to our federal, federal and state and local partners to assist us with ballistic evidence, examination, and submission. In 2018, the Winston-Salem Police Department seized 686 firearms. In 2019, we seized 900 firearms. And so far in 2020, the Winston-Salem Police Department has seized 19 firearms, which puts us on track to seize again over 900 for this year. Continuing the use of our NIBIN system, our National Integrated Ballistic Investigative Network System. This is a system that we use in partnership with ATF. 
Nibin is a resource that is vital to any violent firearms related crime reduction strategy because it provides investigators with the ability to compare these ballistic evidence against evidence from other violent crimes on a local, regional, and national level. This capacity generates investigative leads that would rarely be revealed in the absence of this technology. As in 2019 and in, as needed in 2020, the VFIT, the Violent Firearms Investigative Team, and the Winston-Salem Police Department's gang unit will combine their investigative personnel and skill sets to combat firearms and firearm-related crimes. The team will effectively coordinate several joint investigations with the goal of identifying and arresting the most wanted offenders committing the majority of the violent firearms crimes in our city. Acquisition and deployment of the gunshot detection system. This system will detect and convey the location of gunfire using acoustic type sensors. This will allow the Winston-Salem Police Department to respond to gunshots in real time without waiting for the same to come in by way of calls to our communication center by citizens. Our Violent Firearm Augmentation Saturation Patrol. In a partnership with the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, Saturation Patrol is a joint effort between the Winston-Salem Police Department and the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office to combat firearms-related violence. This initiative will enable officers to respond to discharging firearms calls citywide as well as hotspot locations, known, known incidents that have uh, occurred or retaliation attacks that are suspected to occur. Officers will also conduct high visibility patrol, traffic enforcement, and make community contacts in the hotspot locations in an effort to prevent additional violence. All of this will be done without affecting the normal call response or service response to calls for service in the city. The Winston-Salem Forsyth County Gang Reduction Steering Committee will continue to focus on targeted suppression, direct intervention, and prevention programs. Participating members include our local organizations, law enforcement, and our community clergy. The Gang Steering Committee provides services to address the mental and emotional needs of at-risk and on and or gang-involved youth individuals and their families. Our Chronic Violent Offenders Program, the CVO. The CVO program is a local strategy designed by the Forsyth County District Attorney's Office to provide a comprehensive review of violent offenders in Forsyth County. It includes participation from federal, state, and local law enforcement and prosecutorial agencies and jurisdictions with jurisdictions within Forsyth County. This group meets monthly to review cases involving violent repeat offenders, particularly cases involving firearms. Law enforcement assists with any follow-up needed for the enhancement of investigation and prosecution. Our Violent Crimes Task Force. This program offers an opportunity for offenders to hear messages from law enforcement, prosecutors, and community partners. Offenders are presented with information on alternatives and opportunities to avoid violent behavior, general criminal behavior, and gang involvement. The Winston-Salem Police Department conducts these notifications and will continue to do so three times per year. The, invest the information provides, provided varies in relevance to police response to gang activity and gun violence. Potential solutions to the problems and opportunities for change are provided with associated levels of empirical support. Again, I say, we cannot do this alone. Violent crime is not just a law enforcement problem. 
It's not just a criminal justice problem. It is a community problem, and it will take our community working together to eradicate the violence. At this time, I will present Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough to share with you his 2020 commitment to address violent crime. Good afternoon. I'm Bobby Kimbrough uh, with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. First of all, I want to uh, thank my partners in crime prevention for being here because we are partners in crime prevention. Our 2020 vision, as the Chief has said, to reiterate what she has said, we will keep the saturation patrol in, in place. We will continue to do joint collaboration with all of the federal agencies. Currently, we have task force officers assigned to uh, the federal agencies. In addition to that, we are currently in conversation as we continue to develop our real-time crime center that is underway as we have developed that uh, in uh, the Forsyth County, along with our intelligence unit to combat crime and also to deter crime. In addition to that, we have put systems in place to work on the rate of recidivism as it occurs. So we are totally committed to all of the partnerships that you see present in this room because at the end of the day, we're in this together and crime has no respect of boundaries and we will see it as such that we address it as it occurs. And I thank you all for allowing us to be a partner in this partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Now I'll ask our District Attorney, Jim O'Neill, to step to the podium. Good afternoon. <clears throat> um, I'd first like to begin by addressing something that was recently written uh, in one of the newspapers here in town that talked about the number of homicides that uh, the city had seen um, this past year. And I think what's important to remember is that when you're comparing the number of homicides that we saw here this past year to what was going on in the 70s, we had about the same number, roughly the same number. Well, here's the important part. The population back in the 70s was about 130,000 uh, here in the city. We have since surpassed that by more than 100,000 people. We're now up to closer to 250,000 people uh, living in the city. So obviously, when the population increases, you know, crime can increase as well. What you have to examine is the rate of those homicides. And when you consider that we have more than 120,000 more people than we had in the 70s, and we have roughly the same number of homicides, well, that means that our rate of homicides has been cut nearly in half. And, and that's, a, that's a testament to what's going on here. You know, I, I, I tell you this, that I, I travel all over the place, across this entire state, and I deal with prosecutors from Murphy to Manio. And what we have here with, with, with our police chief in the city, we have, in my opinion, the finest police law enforcement around. That's the truth. And, and we have a sheriff now who, who is partnering with the city and partnering with the district attorney's office to keep our county as well as our city safe. And, you know, we, we are just really, we are blessed that we're being led our two major law enforcement agencies. We have people that actually care about what's going on in this community. So we're, we're really, we're, we're in a fortunate place, which is why when you look at uh, a, a recent rating where Winston-Salem stands compared to the rest of similarly sized cities across North Carolina. Well, folks, we are the safest city in all of North Carolina. Safest city. And, and again, I credit what's going on with our police chief and our sheriff getting out into the community and building trust and building bridges with people because that's extremely important. And it's important to the prosecutors, myself and, and Matt Martin's office, because when we come down to trial, we have to have people that are willing to get up there and, and, and testify about things that they saw going on in their neighborhoods or in their communities. And it's, it's the partnerships that you're building that are making that possible. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. The challenge that we're going to have as a community and as a state as we move forward has been a change in the law. The law changed here in 2019, December of 2019. It was called Raise the Age. And what that did, it made juveniles 
no longer under the age of 16, but now juveniles are all those persons under the age of 18. And that is going to be a challenge moving forward. And when we talk about needing community partnerships, uh, it, that, that's exactly what we're going to need moving forward because we're going to see, and we've seen, an increase in gang activity over the last six months to a year. And that will, will pose a challenge to law enforcement and prosecutors as we go forward because you're dealing with 16 and 17 year olds that used to be able to be treated as adults. Those are now going to be handled in juvenile court, depending on the type of crime that they commit. So we do need more outreach into our schools. We need, we need our schools to step up and communicate with our SROs and be sure that we're on top of bubbling little problems uh, so we can address it before it gets to a point where somebody is using a weapon uh, against another, another student. So that is going to be our challenge moving forward, dealing with juveniles and dealing with uh, high school kids that end up in gangs. And to the community, I say we, we do need your help. We need your partnership and your willingness to step up and get into the elementary schools, get into the middle schools, and explain to, to the kids the dangers of associating themselves with gangs. As the chief mentioned, we have over in, in our office, we created a program known as the Chronic. And if you are a chronic offender in this community, the resources that we have are going to be pointed towards getting after what you're doing and the crimes you're committing in this city. If you believe that a small percentage of the people, small percentage, are the ones driving violent crime like I do, you focus your resources on resolving those issues and you're going to create a safer place for the entire community. But at the end of the day, we are lucky here in Winston-Salem. We are blessed. You go online and pick up some, some of the headlines going on across the state. We are very fortunate. I appreciate the leadership of law, law enforcement and our mayor and the partnerships that we've built here, especially with our U.S. Attorney's Office as well. Thank you all for being here. Now we'll have our resident agent in charge uh, from our Drug Enforcement Administration, Dirk Blue. Uh, Chief Thompson, thank you for having me here today. Uh, Sheriff Kimbrough, thank you. Um, unfortunately, uh, drug trafficking and violent crime go hand in hand. That's just an unfortunate reality. Uh, DEA is very blessed to have partnerships with all of the law enforcement agencies in this room. And uh, as we continue to combat this problem, we'll, we'll continue to be working side by side with all of our law enforcement partners to combat this. Thank you. We appreciate your partnership. From the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, Special Agent Mike Newsom. Good afternoon. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the chief, uh, the sheriff, the city of Winston-Salem for having us here and allowing ATF to be a part of this initiative. Uh, ATF has been and will continue to be fully committed to partnering with the police department, the sheriff's office, and every agency in this region uh, to ensure that we are taking proactive steps to reduce violent crime in this area. I think it's extremely important uh, that we continue to utilize the tools, the resources, and the technology that we have available to us, such as NIBIN, uh, to identify the groups and the individuals who are out here committing gun crimes, <coughs> driving crime rates, uh, so that we can proactively investigate and also prosecute them in an effort to disrupt this cycle of violence. Um, our hope is that by doing this, uh, we can get out in front of some of these crimes and stop them before they happen. Uh, that is the goal and that is the mission of ATF, and we are proud to be a part of this effort here in Winston-Salem. Thank you. Next up is our U.S. Attorney for the Middle District, Matt Martin. Good afternoon. Chief, thank you. Mayor, City Council, Sheriff. You know, if you think about how to bring about change, how to bring about a reduction in violence, I think the common theme you've heard this entire afternoon is partnership. It's because it requires partnership at every level. 
you have to have resources, federal, state, and local, and community in order to be able to get after the root causes of violence and those who are committing violent crimes. And so my presence here today is simply to say that the partnerships in Winston-Salem and Forsyth County are strong. You see the Department of Justice here represented by me, by the, the DEA, by the ATF. It's because we're invested in the success of these law enforcement agencies and the reduction of violent crime in this <coughs> community. We're invested in the success of programs like NIBIN, where we're using technology to try to identify the hot shooters, to try to identify the people who are terrorizing our neighborhoods. We're using things like notifications that the chief mentioned through our Project Safe Neighborhoods program to try to give people the dignity of a choice. You want to commit violence? You've committed violence in the past? Well, that stops now because you're on our radar screen and you have a choice. And the goal of all these things is to take the violent folks who refuse to leave the life of violence off the street so the rest of us can be safe. That's what these partnerships are about. And so I would ask the, the folks in Forsyth County and Winston-Salem, the community, community members, please work with us. I know the sheriff, the police chief, the DA have worked hard to build trust. And the way we've done that is to use tools to identify the people that are actually causing the problems. So it's not a shakedown in the neighborhood. It's removing the gang members and the folks who we, you, everyone knows is causing problems. So we'd ask you to work with us. And as the city councilor said, to those who are committing violent crimes, I hope you hear loud and clear that the federal government, the state government, and the local government are coming right after you with every resource we've got. Because the elected officials have spoken from the President of the United States to the Mayor of Winston-Salem that we're not going to take violence anymore. And so our job as a U.S. Attorney, as a Department of Justice, as a DA, as a Sheriff, as a Police Chief, is to fulfill that mandate and reduce violence on the street. So we're coming. Thank you, Chief. So let me be clear. We will not tolerate violent crime in Winston-Salem and Forsyth County, period. We're not going to allow you to continue to victimize, terrorize, or criminalize our citizens here, our visitors here, our businesses here. You have heard from our partners. You've heard from our city officials. We're going to use every ounce of resources we have available to go after you and to prosecute you to the fullest extent. That is our promise. That is our commitment. That is our vision for 2020. Now you've heard me speaking and you've heard our partner speaking from the law enforcement and criminal justice perspective. I want to take a moment to speak to you as a mother. I have two teenage children that are from Winston-Salem. I have a vested interest in this community, in the safety and well-being and prosperity of this community. I will not allow, nor will members of our agency or our partner agencies, allow you to terrorize the children in our community. From August to September, from August to December of 2019, we lost three children out of our schools. It's time to end that. We have to work together as a community, as a community, to bring about the change that's needed. Winston-Salem is no anomaly. It's happening all across our country, but our commitment is to this community. This is where we will use our resources. We've got to get involved. How do you get involved? Connect with some of our nonprofit organizations, Smart Start, and ask how can you be involved with reading to our young children 
so that we can address the literacy issue here in our community. Reach out to the school system and Dr. Harrison and find out how you can mentor a child, how you can adopt a school or a classroom to help with our children. Take time to sit down and just talk to a child. You see, gangs are providing things to our children that they figure they need and are not getting in life. As parents, as community leaders, as law enforcement, we're the biggest gang in this town. And we need to take charge of instilling hope in our children. A child without hope is a child living in danger. We share with you our commitment. What is yours? To conclude this press conference, we're intended to, the press conference was intended to provide insight into the different methods that, that are being used by the Winston-Salem Police Department to combat the increase in gun violence through preventative, informative, and enforcement and prosecutorial need, means. All of these initiatives, along with increased efforts on the part of our patrol officers, detectives, street crimes units, and prosecutorial partners make up our 2020 vision and plan to address violent crime in our community. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question. If you can expand upon the one major difference between the 2019 <coughs> plan and the 2020 plan to attack this gun violence that the city has seen. So the question is, what is the one major difference to attack gun violence um, from 2019 to 2020? And the answer to that is that uh, basically, we're continuing the efforts that we've had in 2019, um, and in 2020, we'll, we'll use as we find um, and, and resources become available to our advancements in technology um, to move forward. For instance, um, in 2019, we were able to send off uh, sexual assault test kits to hold accountable people who had uh, violated uh, citizens in our community 20 years, 30 years prior. Um, also, we took advantage of a Department of Justice grant. Those things to, to get us the gunshot detection system. Those things we will continue to do, and as new opportunities become available, we'll continue to use those opportunities. Um, so the question is, where are all the guns coming from, and is it, does it appear to be a bigger issue? What I'll tell you is that, um, and it's no secret, that um, the fear that we've had in the past years is that our guns were going to be taken. And so because of that, everybody went out to get guns and to secure the guns that they had. And at the end of the day, we're seeing those guns play out. Now, what I'll tell you is we have people that are leaving guns, people who are in lawful possession of guns, leaving them inside of locked vehicles, unsecured. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes in, breaks into the vehicle, and now we have a gun on the street that's being used uh, to offend our citizens. And if you can, expand upon, I, I <coughs> question that is asked, but expand upon how dangerous that is for you and your officers out on the streets to where these guns that were bought legally are now in the hands of those who have nothing else better to do but to commit these acts. So the question is, how dangerous are these guns that are um, out on the street in the hands of the wrong people for law enforcement? Um, they're extremely dangerous, but more importantly, they're, they're dangerous to our citizens who have no idea what they could be uh, facing or encountering. You know, in our world as law enforcement officers, and, and you saw that play out um, in the last few weeks, 
we, we are met, it's, it's our job to meet the face of danger. So to a certain extent, we expect it at times. We have to be prepared at all times. But our citizens should not have to encounter that, should not have to be, uh, that should not be enforced upon them, and they should not be victimized by that. Do you know where in the city that the uh, gunshot detection system is going to be deployed? The question is, um, if I know where in the city the gunshot detection system will be de deployed. The answer to that question is we're using real-time data uh, based on our calls for service as it pertains to discharging firearms to deploy um, the gunshot detection system. So where is that? I can get back with you to tell you exactly where that is. I, I have an idea, but um, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm totally accurate in the location. But I'll be more than happy to share that information with you. And so last year, I believe the numbers that I got from you guys was 508 victims that were juveniles to violent crimes in the, in the city. What sort of, in terms of this plan of attacking the violence, what sort of plan is there to help those victims that uh, we all know that violence can be the result of somebody that was a victim to violence in years past. So what kind of work is going to be able to do to target those victims of violent crimes that may be at the most risk to then turn around and commit other acts? If, if I heard you correctly, then what you're saying is those who were victimized in the past by violence become offenders, is that what you're saying? And what are we doing to help them? So there are um, alternatives. We talked about our, our um, Violent Crimes Task Force, and that is where we bring known offenders in, and some of them have been victims of violent crimes in the past, and we provide them alternatives to the life of violence um, through our community partners um, and our law enforcement partners. And uh, we work vigorously with them and the, their, their most cases, patrol, um, parole, or probation's um, office to help them be successful. At the end of the day, the individuals have got to want to make the change in their own lives. Can you talk about what, I guess, gang violence in Winston-Salem looks like? Or can you give some examples of gang-related incidents in the city since 2019? Um, gang-related violence, what that looks like. So um, instances of gang-related violence, uh, we have had um, uh, homicides to occur in our city last year that we've been able to link to gang violence. Um, if you know anything about gangs, you know that there's, um, there are initiation processes. Um, s some gang activity is tied directly to uh, drug activity, and so um, if there is any type of, of um, failed uh, drug sales or a drug deal gone bad, uh, people, persons can be involved in gangs and um, that erupts into violence. The question is after the shooting um, in December on Lowry Street, how much consideration has been given to workplace violence with the city of Winston-Salem. City of Winston-Salem has always taken uh, workplace violence seriously, and it's not tolerated. So um, in terms of, of how serious it is, it's extremely serious, and uh, the city is always reevaluating opportunities um, to, to hold people accountable. But at the end of the day, workplace violence is not tolerated with the city of Winston-Salem. There are no other questions. This will conclude our press conference. Thank you all for being here.